so I'm probably not the only one currently sat in a room with a disturbing amount of unpainted model kits. Today we'll have a chat about the Warhammer phenomenon that is the Pile of Shame and how to beat it. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics, the strategy-focused 40k channel, where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop, but that does mean actually getting some there in the first place. For the people who haven't heard the term before, the phrase pile of shame is a commonly used term for all of the miniature kits that you've bought but not assembled and painted yet, all of the painting backlog, unfinished projects, or any kit that you might have been very tempted to buy and then have done absolutely nothing with since you bought it. It can be a bit of a slippery slope into developing one, as I've found myself. It never really used to be a problem that I'd be able to build and paint whatever I bought in short order, but as my painting standards have increased somewhat, everything gets done just a little bit slower, and a backlog has somewhat developed. I'd imagine that more hobbyists than not do tend to have at least some form of unfinished project on the go. It does seem to be really quite a common affliction in 40k. Basically you just have more appetite and excitement for buying model kits, than you have time or inclination to build and paint them. Games Workshop and other miniature companies are always coming up with new shiny miniatures to sell us, each one trying to do better than the last, whether it's the look and feel of the miniature itself, decent background for it, or interesting rules in game. You might also have the chance to buy some models at very good deals, either off eBay or through temporary Games Workshop promotions, or you might just have suddenly got temporarily inspired to begin an entire another army, without fully considering just how much time it might take you. The limiting factors tend to be free time, which none of us have infinite amounts of, motivation to get through what can be really quite a lot of work if you don't find painting particularly relaxing, and even if you do, very few people would actually want to paint from dawn till dusk every day. There might be other things that can derail a project as well, such as rules changes in the game making the army not quite as good as before, or even just hard to field in the exact same way that you'd bought it. It's between these factors that a painting backlog can build up. Generally, it pretty much is a bad thing to have on the go. You are really wasting money if you've just bought loads and loads of kits, if you know there's realistically not a very good chance of ever actually finishing them all. In general, Warhammer models are something that you can come back to at later dates, but at least within the game they can have a bit of a shelf life, so to speak. As I said, rules might change, or even additions to the game might change, which could drastically affect what you might be able to field in-game, and also Games Workshop does update kits from time to time, so if it's some older things that you've bought, then it's not impossible that they might be redone. I'm not saying that there isn't some advantages to having some things in a stockpile. You might have units that you're planning to finish up if you fill this army again in the near future. Model kits that you're waiting on some new rules for before deciding what their war gear is going to be. Or even just a very good deal that you might have got for the miniatures that you're willing to wait until you have the time to actually make them. And if that never happens, then you might easily be able to sell them on for the same or more. Generally though, it's not something that you want to get too out of hand, as well as lots of money, it can also take up a fair bit of space, and just make everything a bit chaotic due to the amount of stuff. So let's talk about a few options for cutting down on the painting backlog. It's very simple really, either it's limit the stuff coming in, or expedite the stuff that's going out. In terms of buying, there's just really nothing but self-discipline for this. It can be pretty hard when new releases are around the corner, but if you actually want to start cutting down on it, then you basically need to finish one kit before you buy the next, or finish even more than that if you want to actually start cutting down. If you went for a one out, one in approach, which could be either finishing modelling or just selling, then it stands to reason that the pile's going to go down. You could set some goals either with yourself or with a friend or partner. I generally find that non-Warhammer playing partners are generally supportive of not having an ever-increasing supply of unbuilt plastic kits in the house. If you really are serious about cutting down on buying and things, then stating your goals to another person and what will happen if you don't do it is a really good way of motivating yourself to stick to your own rational decisions. The other option is to of course process the pile, which basically means either finishing those models or getting rid of them. If things really have built up a bit, then I really recommend taking an inventory, finding out exactly what you have there, and being quite critical as to whether or not every piece should actually stay in the pile, or should maybe be gotten rid of in some fashion. I try and be realistic with each project as to how long it's going to take you, whether or not you're really ever going to get round to it, and whether or not it's even worth getting round to it, considering it might take time away from other things that you might want to do in life, whether that's collecting or working on other projects, or just doing something completely outside model soldiers. For the kits and projects that you have decided to keep, I think it would be sensible to make some sort of rough painting schedule, starting with the project that's either easiest to finish, most inspiring, or you most want on the table. From there it's just cracking on, there's all sorts of factors as to how quickly you get models painted, Having a regular time set aside in the day for painting isn't a bad idea, nor is keeping a painting station set up if you have room for it in the house. If you have plenty of time but not so much motivation, then I'd usually try and find something to listen to while you are painting, whether that's music, YouTube videos, 
or audiobooks, and I'll be sure to keep any recently finished projects out on display just to motivate you as to what you can achieve when things are done. You can also look at the process of how you paint and see if there's any ways that you can potentially speed things up a bit. Stepping back on the absolute fine details of quality could be an option if you just want to get things out the door a bit. Maybe, say, making more use of those new Citadel contrast paints rather than more traditional methods. Or considering doing base painting in bulk with airbrushes or spray paints to very quickly get a lot of paint or a lot of models. Otherwise, if you don't think that you're going to get them painted or finished in any reasonable amount of time, then you've got the option of getting rid of them. Personally, I would typically sell them, but you could also potentially trade them with friends, give them as a gift to someone, or if there's just some bits that aren't really much use to anyone, then either bin them or throw them in the bits box. Being quite familiar with eBay and buying and selling models online has been a bit of a contributing factor to my own painting backlog, as I feel fairly comfortable with reselling things online. It does mean that I'm a little bit more blasé about buying things, not 100% knowing whether I'll fully build and paint them. Unless you did get them at a very good deal though, in general reselling on eBay will be at a loss, even if it might not be the biggest one. eBay charges fees, and of course there's postage and packing costs. Even so though, it's a good way of getting market value for the miniatures that you have. Otherwise, you can trade or sell to friends, or advertise entire armies and things on Facebook groups or forums. I prefer eBay myself because it's the one that I'm most familiar with, and they at least have some reasonable policies in terms of protecting the buyers and sellers there, but I do know people who have had plenty of success with these other groups. So I hope that's been a little bit of help to some people, a bit of discussion around the topic. Of course, everyone's different, and if you have any advice on cutting down on a painting backlog yourself, then please let us know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more from the channel, feel free to subscribe to Allspex Tactics, where we have regular 40k content coming out pretty much every day. Finally, if you have been finding my videos useful or just enjoying watching them, then I'd just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description. Channel patrons get to see one video early each week, there are regular polls to see what sort of videos come next on the channel, and patrons also entered into the Allspex Tactics prize draw each month, where I post out some big kits to random people to help add to their pile of shame. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.